guys, Devin here coming at you with another video. If you're someone who's looking at switching to the Lumix system or coming over from Micro Four Thirds and finally going over to that new S5, I know that the first thing you're going to be looking at is which lenses should you get. One of the most popular focal lengths, if not the most popular focal length that a lot of people go for, is something in that 24 range with a zoom to 70 or 105. Making both of the lenses we're going to be talking about in this video really, really positioned well to be something that you should have in your kit, one or the other. Now me, I actually have both, and I've had them both since they've come out. I was an early S1 adopter, and I bought the bundle that came with the 24 to 105 because that's all they had at the time. A few months later, the S1H gets announced with the 24 to 72.8, and I also picked up that one. There was a moment in time where I thought I might have sold the 24 to 105, but being that I was gonna have two cameras, I figured it'd be a pretty good lens to keep on the B cam just in case I wanted some of the same focal ranges, both being able to run around back and forth. And as time has gone on, I still never look to sell the 24 to 105 f4 and that's because it's not exactly a clear winner out of these two of which one you should get it, it depends on a lot of things it depends on your budget it depends on what you value more this lens right here the 24 to 105 f4 is a really really interesting lens you think of it as a kit lens because it came out at launch it's a f4 and that's usually associated with you know a cheaper piece of glass but I think because whenever they released this lens it was only one of three they worked really really hard on it and even though it doesn't have the S Pro branding or anything like that this lens is incredibly sharp and incredibly good for the money it's nothing like that 20 to 60 it just came out that 20 to 60 it looks like a pretty good piece of glass but from what I can tell online I'll test it more when I get it in person that lens has a lot of fringing issues and the sharpness isn't quite there like it is on the 24 to 105 macro two things right off the back that set these lenses apart is price this lens is $2,200 new. There's not as many of these in circulation, so they're a little hard to find used. You can probably find them used for a couple hundred dollars off. The 24 to 105 is 1300 new, but you can find a lot of these online for cheaper. You can find these close to like 800 maybe even $700. Sometimes people bundle them with their camera and they're really, really discounted. We have a bit of a weight difference here too. The F4 is gonna be a little lighter at 680 grams or about one and a half pounds. While the 24 to 70 being that has more glass elements, it's a lot bigger. There's a little bit of metal. The build quality is a bit better on this one. This one's going to be weighing closer to two pounds or about 935 grams. And while the build quality on this one is better and you have a bit of metal mixed with plastic, this one is all plastic, but it doesn't really feel that that cheap either. It's all really tight and really solid and I really like this lens as well. Something we're going to notice first off on the 24 to 105 f4 macro is of course it zooms out a bit further. On the outside you have a couple of switches here that are absent on the 24 to 70. One being the locking mechanism that can lock it at 24. I'm not really sure why this switch is here. I've, I've, I've never used it. I guess it's if you don't want your lens jiggling around in your bag or something like that you can lock it but you can only lock it at 24 mil it's not like you can lock it throughout the whole entire range we have an autofocus and manual switch right here and while you have the option to switch manual focus and autofocus pretty easily on your camera it is nice to have another spot on your lens it's just another option to be able to switch that feature on and off really quick or if you're a pessimist it's another thing to bump into and mess you up during your shoot and then last switch and this is the most useful switch is the image stabilization the Panasonic S5 S1 S1H SR all these cameras have really great in body stabilization up to five axis but if you pair them with lenses that have stabilization stabilization you can actually achieve six this is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing as you'll see in the stabilization test moving on to the 24 to 70 this lens feels a bit heftier the zoom doesn't go out as far and the lens itself is completely absent of switches it's a 2.8 aperture it doesn't have any kind of image stabilization there's no locking mechanism but it does have this and this is my favorite thing on that pro series lenses is the focus clutch all of these lenses are focused by wire but one thing i really hate about ones that don't have the focus clutch is while this feels smooth and it's a solid zoom ring not having those stops and not having those measurements it is harder to gauge the speed in which i'm focusing back and forth from different objects whereas this one having the focus clutch it really does just help me nail focus a lot easier when i'm deciding to shoot manual focus it feels smoother it feels more stable you can just tell this is a little more fine-tuned i do love that about it now before we get into these tests i do want to say it's not a perfect one-to-one -one. i kept the 24 to 105 on the lumix s1 while i kept the 24 to 70 
running on the Lumix S1H. In hindsight, this was kind of a bad idea only because I can't really show you the sharpness. I kept the codex the same, I kept the resolution the same, I kept the picture profile the same, everything is shot in flat with the contrast all the way down. The sensors are very similar, so we should be getting accurate colors and all this, but you really won't be able to see the sharpness perfectly. Because the Lumix S1H has an AA filter, it does give it a little bit of a softer film look, and the S1 has the AA filter removed, it's going to make the 24 to 105 look a little sharper. I'll leave a link down below of someone who did some tests that show the sharpness difference. The 24 to 70 is a bit sharper. It's not a huge difference, but the 24 to 70 is a little bit sharper than the 24 to 105. I also want to mention that the colors coming out of the 24 to 70 are a little more natural and a little more flat. They're a little less contrasty. This actually introduces a little bit of contrast when you're filming, but they're both very, very similar. The first test we're going to show is just a simple shot. One is going to have the Lumix S1H with the 24 to 70. The other side is going to have the S1 with the 24 to 105. And I just put them side by side. The frames are not exactly the same, but you'll be able to see the details at F4 and you'll be able to see the details in the bokeh in the background when you switch from F4 to 2.8. We're gonna have the same focal length on both of these. This is really just kind of show people who are new to full frame the differences between focal lengths and having a 2.8 aperture versus having an F4 and how that affects your bokeh in the background. Now that's it for that first simple test. It's really crazy how nice the S1H looks with that 24 to 70. Like it, it's just this film look, it looks black magic-esque. It just has this really nice softness to it while still being sharp. It sounds so contradicting, but, it, but it's true. It's just a really nice soft film over this nice sharp image. Moving on, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is the minimum focus distance on these two lenses. The 24 to 105 is claimed to be a macro lens, and though it can't get quite as close as a normal macro lens can, the minimum focus distance on this guy is 0.98 feet, whereas the minimum focus distance on this guy is 1.2. Now 1.2 feet and basically what is a foot doesn't seem like a big difference. However, when you combine that with the 105 zoom range, it actually ends up mattering quite a lot. For this next scene, I made some tea. I focused on a point of the glass. I set both cameras up to what their minimum focus distance was and zoomed in all the way with both. That way you could see the difference between being able to zoom in all the way at 70 and get really close to something and what you could create with that type of look versus being able to zoom in to 105, getting as close as you possibly can and what that kind of looks like. And the differences are pretty astounding. This is where this lens starts to become more useful if you think of it with that macro application. Like, like pretty crazy, right? It's crazy how just 0.2 feet and then 70 to like 105, just the difference in those two looks. I mean, you can get some really, really close focus, like razor thin, everything on both sides blown out. If you were shooting weddings with this and you wanted to get really good macros of the rings or anything like that, this guy would pull through. Moving on to our next test, we're going to be trying image stabilization with the lens. Now, depending on what you do, you may be thinking like, I just want all the stabilization I can get. I should definitely get the one with the image stabilization switch. Though I will say it doesn't make that big of a difference in a lot of scenarios. Panasonic cameras have such good IBIS in camera that when you're taking photos, you don't really notice lens stabilization that much. And if you're going to be walking around or vlogging with it, that extra six stop actually becomes negative rather than positive. You see the bad part about having really strong IBIS I've learned, especially after watching like the Canon R6 and the Canon R5, is that when you're using really wide angles, 24 being really wide in this context, and you're stomping and you have these like heavy hits, if you have heavy hits with your foot or you like shuffle around really heavily, is you'll see some waviness in the corners and the top and that's the lens and the sensor trying to like correct for the shake. In the next test you're about to see, I didn't really go easy on it. Like I walked around and stomped around because I'm trying to see what the IBIS can negate. And the footage from the 24 to 70 looks better because it has less stabilization and so it's trying to correct less for all the shaking. Now I don't want to say image stabilization in the lens is pointless or having really strong IBIS is bad. In fact, whenever you're standing still and you're just moving around, you're just trying to stay steady, 
having all that image stabilization is really, really good. Or when you're doing more of like a swaying motion, like if you have a cage or something like that, that's when you'll start seeing this image stabilization to be really, really good. That's when strong IBIS really shines. But my point of all this is basically just saying the IBIS in the camera is so good, I don't think it's really going to matter if you have image stabilization on your lens, especially on the wider end. At 105, you'll probably start appreciating it more. I know in the 70 to 200, having those six stops is really, really, really nice, but it shouldn't be a deal breaker here. Now moving on to our final test, which is about to be a really outdated test after we get the next firmware. We're currently on the firmware right before the S5 gets released. One of the big things about the S5 is that it has improved autofocus and we will be getting those features later in the S1H, the S1 and the S1R. But as it currently stands, this is the only way I can do this test. So just know we're on the latest firmware and this is subject to change. And when my S5 comes in, I'll make it a point to re-upload this section with the updated autofocus just to see if anything changes, just in case someone hasn't pulled the trigger or got the purchase in yet. For this test, I set up a number of objects all the way from the background to the foreground. And I simply just clicked autofocus points and let the focus try to catch up. For these tests, I use area autofocus. I do wanna say I've noticed a couple of times it happened on the S1 H with the 24 to 70, I go to click on like one of the objects with the area autofocus and it didn't go to that object right away. I had to like click it again. Um, it's not that it was hunting, it was almost like my click on the screen didn't register to the lens. I've never really noticed this happening in the field. I did notice it happen in this test though, which is strange. In the field, if I need to autofocus on something, I'll typically click it a few times, but here I was just doing single clicks in a controlled environment. So I don't know if there's something that happens to me often and I don't notice, but it happened to me a couple times here and that's why you'll see the uh, 24 to 70 for like two of the shots, it'll focus a little bit slower. That's gonna wrap up the autofocus test on these. Once again, this is subject to change with the new firmware that's coming out. But as it stands right now on the older firmware, the 24 to 105 does seem to hunt a little more in certain scenarios. But as it stands right now, the 24 to 105 does seem to hunt a little bit more. And the 24 to 70, I just, when it does pull the focus, I just find it to be more pleasing. I don't know if it's the dual focus motors that has to do with that or what, but I just found that when it came from the background to the foreground, those poles just looked a lot smoother. At the end of the day, I wouldn't let either one really be a deal breaker on which lens I would go with, especially because that new firmware looks like it does supercharge them all. This one will at least be caught up to that one by that time. But after seeing all those tests, you could really see how similar these two lenses are. And at the end of the day, like which one should you get? If you're someone who's just starting out and you have a lot of things to buy and you need things like audio or you need some other focal lengths and you need a ton of stuff, then the 24 to 105 is kind of a no-brainer. Like, just grab you this. Especially if you have an S5 with the dual gain ISO, that's gonna be able to make this F4 perform really well even in low light. The macro feature is really fun. That extra zoom range is really, really nice. And then also because the S series has the ability to shoot Super 35 or APS-C mode, it gives you this 1.5 times crop that can make that 105 be an even longer zoom. If there's other things you have to get, if you want a macro lens and a zoom lens and a wide angle all in one, go with this. This is highly, highly flexible. It's flexible for your budget. It's flexible with its zoom. It's flexible with its capabilities. I mean, it's, it's so flexible that I haven't sold it. It's still in my kit. Now moving on to the 24-70 f2.8. Who should get this lens? If you're someone who's been doing this for a long time and you notice the optical differences and you appreciate the small little boost of quality of having glass be near perfect, to the levels I would say of Leica, or if you're someone who knows they're gonna be shooting in low light and you know you're gonna need that extra stop of light at 2.8, then it's a no brainer. Go with this one. If you know you're gonna be pulling focus a lot, this is a lot more enjoyable. The reason I shelled out the money for this lens when it came out is because I've been doing this for a while and I'm noticing these tiny little nuance and differences. Most clients aren't even gonna notice the difference between these two lenses and what they bring to the table. This is a lot more for you and your workflow. So if your budget doesn't fit it, don't stress. Grab the 24 to 105 F4. You can do everything with this lens. And then as you work your way up and as you expand, maybe eventually you'll go to this one. 
or you'll be like me and you'll end up keeping both. Don't shell out the extra money for this one if it's going to put you in a rough situation. You can do all of your work with this one. But that's gonna be it for this video. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. And that's it, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.